All right, back now on the politics lead. The president of the Los Angeles City Council has resigned that position, the presidency, following the release of a secretly recorded conversation during which she used a vile racist slur to refer to the child of a fellow council member. This happened in a conversation about redistricting and the possible impact on communities of color. CNN's Nick Watt reports on the growing fallout from these remarks as calls intensify for her to step down from the council altogether. Mike Bonin is an L.A. City Council member and father to a young black son. Last year, they went to an MLK Day parade. City Council President Nuri Martinez had some issues. It's like black and brown on this float, and then there's this young white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the float, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Why is it Changuito? Translation little monkey. They're raising him like a little white kid, which I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let me, let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Bonin tweeted that Martinez attacked our son with horrific racist slurs and talked about her desire to physically harm him. It's vile, abhorrent, and utterly disgraceful. There were protests at her house. Today, she resigned as council president. She issued this apology. In a moment of intense frustration and anger, I let the situation get the best of me and I hold myself accountable for these comments. For that, I am sorry. Recorded nearly a year ago, the audio was posted anonymously on Reddit, first reported by the Los Angeles Times. Those present were, reports the paper, all Democrats, all Hispanic. Among them, Labour leader Ron Herrera. He's tweeted, there is no justification and no excuse for the vile remarks made in that room, period. And I didn't step up to stop them. He did not. And when Martinez described Bonin's son as an accessory, according to the paper, he joined in. It's an accessory. When we do the MRK parade. Just like, well, just like when, when. They used to have those statues when, in, 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 in uh, right. plantations. Wait, yeah. in, and then when Nuri in brings the her little yard bag or the, the, the Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. That last voice, council member Kevin DeLeon. He's got big ambitions. Ran for mayor this year and a U.S. Senate seat in 18. I regret appearing to condone and even contribute to certain insensitive comments, he wrote. I fell short of the expectations we set for our leaders. Now, this audio tells us a couple of things. The first is the kind of language that some politicians are happy to use when they think nobody is listening. And also, it tells us about the deep divisions amongst the left of center leaders here in Los Angeles. Now, Nuri Martinez is the child of Mexican immigrants, but she says this about immigrants from the Mexican state of Oaxaca. She calls them short little dark people. And she says of the Cuban-American district attorney here in L.A., she says, F that guy. He's with the blacks. John? All right, Nick Watt in Los Angeles. Nick, thank you so much for that. Want to discuss now, John Avalon, CNN senior political analyst. Racist enough to resign the presidency, but not racist enough to give up your whole council seat? Explain to me how tenable that is. <laughs> She's trying to walk the line. She's trying to say, look, I'm going to acknowledge it was wrong which is more than some politicians do, take herself out of leadership, but try to hold on to the seat and hope that she can live another political day. I think that the problem is, is as Nick alluded, look, character is what you do when people aren't watching. Exactly. And, 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 and these folks were caught on tape being racist and loathsome and cruel about the child of one of their colleagues. Uh, and it's just unacceptable. I heard you during the whole piece, Daniel Belton, Huffington Post. We were watching Nick's piece there on the wrap-up, and I could just hear you sighing again and again and again. Well, and because it's just so familiar. I mean, the, the, the reality is there is a lot of anti-black racism that exists across all aspects of our society, including on the left, including within the Hispanic community. And so I wasn't surprised, but I was heavily disappointed and horrified by this behavior. But often what goes around in the dark will eventually come to light, and that's what's happened in this situation. This is, I mean, this is the part that the, the, just, the, the sort of come up and it's the karma of technology in our politics, right? So much has been brought to light, has been brought to all for all of us to see, um, from you know horrific murders to horrific language behind closed doors, and to the point about character as what counts when you're behind closed doors. These, this technology has become the ultimate accountability. We would never know that she had said that had somebody not recorded it and put it out to the world. So there's that's possible now. There's racism behind closed doors. Then there's racism 
at a podium. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right in front of thousands of people, and, and that's what and we call this the racism roundup today. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I make a joke, but it's sad. It's sad. It's, you know, Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville, at a Trump event, was giving this speech where he just equated black people with criminals. Listen. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bull <laughs> they are not owed that. So again, th this. He thought this statement helped him politically. He walked up on this stage, presumably, with the goal of saying that out loud in front of all these people. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that we've gone beyond dog whistles at this point. Like, we're actually calling the dog by its name. We're shouting it out very <laughs> excitedly and vociferously with no shame whatsoever. And that's a huge problem right now going on within the Republican Party, especially those who have decided to hew so closely to Trump and to basically follow him completely off the edge of this cliff here when it comes to talking about race and gender and ethnicity in this country. I mean, surely there'll be an outcry. It, 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 surely yeah, there, I... there'll be an outcry across the political spectrum, yeah. even in, among this, Republicans I mean, it's about this. Yes? Deafening in the last 24 hours. No. Uh, there has been an absence of an outcry. Don Bacon on Meet the Press went the furthest to us saying, well, you know, it wouldn't, it, I, I would have been trying to be more polite. This is the kind of crap that would make Lee Atwater blush. Yeah. All right. I mean, th this is this is screaming a conflation of reparations, crime and racism. And the crowd cheered and his Republican Senate colleagues have not condemned. With a, and that's the problem. With a little bit of like, you know, the really racist, you know, communism weaved in that you mm -hmm. get in the South mm -hmm. as well. Like yeah. they're trying to take everything you have and redistribute it for themselves. I mean, yeah. it's like Unified kind of the trifecta yeah. of, can, can, of racism I, here. I don't mean to be cynical, but can you sit here and tell me you don't think it will help or you think it will hurt? Uh, in that crowd, for the base of the Republican Party, which is, to your point, melded with Trump and is just, you know, saying it out loud, no, that rallies them up. That's fine. But where, where is the Lisa Murkowski? Where are the Republic? Where is Mitt Romney? Where are those who, who differentiate themselves and distinguish from that? Because I know they don't condone that, but they need to say it. They need to say it and stand up and, and say it, no matter even if you're a month out from the election. But we are in a general election now. This isn't just about playing to the base. They need to win moderates and independents and swing voters, and that kind of crap's not going to help. Uh, let me just, while we're on this subject, before we move on to something uplifting, um, <laughs> Kanye West on his Twitter account said something, again, that's just anti-Semitic. Yeah. There's no other interpretation other than it's anti-Semitic. He says, going death con three on Jewish people, you guys, Jews, have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda. Now, there's some debate out there about whether or not he should be banned from Twitter. What I don't understand is why the discussion isn't about Gosh, how awful is it that Kanye West is just saying anti-Semitic things out loud? I think there's this tendency that when it's Kanye, people just, just kind of go like, well, he's trolling. It doesn't matter if the trolling is hateful, damageful, ruins lives. It's like he's going to say it because he likes the attention. It's provocative to him. He feels like he's being this th free thinker and this, like, giving this alternative mm -hmm. viewpoint that is just strictly just completely garbage. It's Jew-hating one-on-one. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I like to say that. You know, anti-Semitism is just a kind word for Jew-hating. This is yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. yeah purely. Yes. Purely. That, that, that's all it is. All right.